Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about cars. My name is Odilo. Um, yeah, car design is quite a niche use of Blender, but you would be surprised how much designers love it. Um, just before I start, I would like to thank Linkage. Uh, they are sponsoring this event and they are also the ones who invited me to speak here. They brought me from Europe, so yeah, thanks a lot to them. And let's start. Um, quickly about me, I'm a Blender user since 14 years now. And I'm a digital designer in automotive design, mainly on the modeling side. And it's actually not my first Beacon. I did one in 2019. Uh, I was still a student then, and I was talking about my vision of how we could use Blender in the automotive design. Um, and since then, two things changed. Uh, the first one is that I actually got a job. So I worked for three, three years um, in a hypercar company in Sweden. Uh, and then created my own studio with my friend Esa Mustonen, where we do design services for automotive design. So design visualization, modeling, and more and more we do our own tools. Um, and the other thing that changed is that now everyone in the automotive field uh, has some exposure to Blender. Um, it's really hard to map the actual number of users in the field, but it would look something like that where for the longest time, it was quite a marginal use, maybe a few people. Um, and then around 2015, it really started to pick up. Um, there's two conferences that show that mainly. Uh, there's Mathilde Amp in 2015 from Tata Motors and Rainer Trumer uh, in 2016 at Kiska. And they showed that they were starting to use it in their processes. Um, and now we're at a point where it's hard to think of a studio that doesn't use Blender in some way. Um, and yeah, it really started to pick up um, in 2019. And I would love to say that this was because of my presentation, but I think it's actually for three reasons. The first one is Blender 2.8. Uh, that's where EV was brought and everyone looked at it for that mainly, I think. But also Blender became like aligned much more with the industry standards. So left click to select, things like this. So it made it much easier for people to actually try it. Um, then the fact that it's open source, for the longest time it was uh, like companies were scared of it in the automotive field, but ultimately it uh, allowed the designers to try it on their own, like at home basically, and then bring the, the tool inside of the studios. So this helped a lot. And then COVID emphasized that even more because around 2020 things were a bit unsure, people had, were at home at a lot of time. And so they just, they knew about Blender, and so they decided to learn it or get even better at it. Um, and now we're in this situation where, yeah, everyone knows about Blender. And I think the best representation of this trend is the GAC um, studio in Milan, where they have a, a bunch of young designers that are my age. Some of them actually studied with me, and they're already Blender fluent. They massively rely on it. And, and they have a very efficient workflow. They, they are at a point where they just keep cranking out uh, concepts. Just three days ago, they released three concepts at once. Um, and yeah, it's very impressive and representative of this trend um, with new designers. And so at Udin, in my company, what we think is that in the future, Blender, Blender will shift from just being one tool that is used for a specific uh, thing to more becoming of a platform um, that will serve an ecosystem around it, and this will will help uh, car design. And so, to show you that, um, we need to talk about what designers use Blender for. And the main point is modeling. Um, historically, modeling was reserved to modelers, so I would be the one in between a designer and the actual 3D of the car, and I would have to translate the the intention of the designer. With polygonal modeling, it gets much easier, or at least blend, uh, designers prefer this approach. So now they can evaluate themselves, the shapes, um, and everything. And this workflow is really helped by advanced modifier that Blender has to offer, for instance, the shrink wrap. So you can easily just have a very clean topology base mesh and then start to cut out your um, door panels and any kind of splits you want to make. And this ensures that you keep a nice reflection flow, basically. If you would look without it, um, it would take ages, if, if it's even possible, to actually get a nice reflection. Whereas with the shrink wrap, you can have something very nice. And this is really good because you can go very detailed in your models. Um, but since we have to, at some point, build a real car, the question comes, um, 
and it was asked to me by one of my boss when I was working at Koenigsegg, uh, who told me, if you were on an island and you just have Blender, and I point a gun at you, could you make uh, car panels that we can actually produce? And the answer is kind of, but the reality is that you would never want to do that. But let's look at the process. Um, what you would need to do is go from your detailed model, but you cannot just export that because most of those um, details come from modifier that are after the sub D uh, modifier. And what you need to do is to export a low poly model because then you have translation in most of the surfacing um, tools nowadays, uh, Rhino, LES, etc., where it takes your polygonal data and then turns each of your polygons into a NURBS patch. But so you wouldn't be able to export just your high poly because this would create millions of faces um, and you wouldn't be able to work with it. So you send your low poly and then you need to redo all your door cuts, everything, all your details within the surfacing mo uh, modeling software. Um, so it's already a pain and you can see it when you see how many surfaces there are. Uh, engineers hate that, especially with small radiuses and stuff like that. Whenever you need to offset something, it just gets terrible. And even if those problems were not there, um, Polygonal just has some inherent trouble um, based on the math. Like you always have those one vertice that is connected to three or five edges. Um, and you cannot avoid that. You just have those three axes. So it's like a cube. At some point, you need to have these. Um, and the problem is that no matter how hard you would tweak those points, like the one on the windshield, for instance, you could never get to a point where the flow is perfect. It, it kind of looks good on the reflection, but when you start so, some mesh analysis, uh, you, you see the trouble. And ultimately, this is not according to the standards we have in automotive. Um, and so you cannot just use this process, basically. And some companies find, find uh, workflows that can take the best of both. So Kiska, for instance, they've always been on the forefront of using Blender. And so what they do is that they take their polygonal data and whether use it for clay modeling, developing there and then scanning and remodeling for production or directly use the Blender model um, and model on top uh, in LES. And so we can draw a few conclusions already on the modeling side, which is that Blender is great for exploration for designers. Um, and the modeling is very, very well supported by advanced modifiers as the shrink wrap. But ultimately, you need NURBS and surfacing expertise to reach the automotive standards. And a simple way to represent that is just this graph where poly is really good to go fast at the beginning. Um, and you can get to like the reviews and everything. But ultimately, you kind of cap to high quality visualization, whereas uh, NURBS has a much more linear way to progress. But you can go much further and go to like the production aspect. Um, but Blender is not used only for modeling. So the second point is visualization. And here it's very different. You have two approaches within Blender. Uh, so you have the cycles for ray tracing. And we start to see some bigger players using it, like Renault uh, and GAC for professional press rendering. Um, but we have also Eevee, which is great for reviews and, and looks really nice. And so this time, there's not we have the two approaches within the same software, like NURBS and Poly are kind of, uh, you need to switch software, whereas here we have both. And we can start to play and go a bit further then. So one thing I really like to play with is the shading system in Blender, which lets you do very complex um, light behavior, basically, on your materials. And you can do that all procedurally. You don't need any maps, and this gives you a lot of control. And so what we did is to develop that to an extent where now we have almost a thousand materials. We have a library that we use. And the goal for us is to not rely on tools like Keyshot or things like this, where we can just stay in Blender. And within it, we can just do all the shading and the visual visualization directly. Um, and then you can go even further, because this is basically creating assets. But then you can start leveraging the Python API. Um, and so what we're doing, for instance, is a configurator where you can easily change um, geometry or shaders or everything. And we see that this could have a lot of potential for uh, reviews, basically, of your designs. And since you just program it uh, with the API, you can create something that is also very convenient to use 
with its own interface uh, and you can set up all of those options directly within Blender. Um, and again, this helps not relying on third-party tools uh, where it would, be, it would be annoying to do exports and then use it from there. So that's pretty cool. And recently, we actually got to push this uh, configurator project and work with uh, Koenigsegg. So we are actually delivering the, the configurator that they use to spec with the client um, the CC850. And so, yeah, you have this hypercar company that uses Blender to sell a 3.5 million car, which um, I think is really, really nice to see that Blender gets good enough that players like this trust it, basically. And here again, um, since you're, we're using the Python API, you can have a lot of fun finding solutions. For instance, uh, we have these triggers to uh, start animations. And so by default, you would have to just play the animation, which would mean you would um, manually have to put all the animation one after each other. But with Python, you can just have this system that reorganizes actions in the, in the nonlinear animation um, part of Blender. Um, yeah, and, and then you can just create those hues that don't exist by default. And so a broader conclusion is that Blender is an amazing open platform that everyone can leverage through the API and everyone can create their own stuff, basically. And I think that car design will benefit more and more uh, from that, whether it's from individuals or companies that can just create the tools and then share them. Um, and this becomes even easier, like the, the barrier of entry for this kind of thing is lowered every day, especially with LLMs um, and generative AI that just help you script very simple stuff. People who don't have any knowledge about scripting are now just doing some tools quickly for making it easier for exporting or stuff like this. Um, yeah, and all of this creates a very rich ecosystem that will help a lot for car design. And I showed you stuff that we did at my company, but there's also other players um, helping the, this ecosystem. For instance, recently there's Plasticity, um, who, like it's a software to do NURBS uh, modeling, and they see the potential of Blender, so they did this bridge to simplify data transfer. Um, you also have Rajiv with um, his website Digital Sculptor, where he's doing this kind of, all kind of add-ons to help transferring data between uh, polygonal and um, surfacing. Also surface diagnostic by uh, Josef, who is bringing um, basically LES surface evaluation tools within Blender. And this time he's leveraging geometry nodes, which is very smart um, to get those, uh, those helps basically, just so that you can have a cleaner um, modeling. And effectively what this does is that it smoothens the curves between the poly aspect and the NURBS so that you can switch from one to another um, more easily or at least have a better base, something that is cleaner and easier to work with. Um, and I think that one project that is very interesting is Surface Psycho from Romain, uh, who is basically rebuilding a whole NURBS kernel within Blender uh, through geometry nodes. And it's very impressive what he's doing with that. Um, he just last week managed to create trimmed NURBS um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward where this is going because it's very, very exciting. Um, and yeah, I hope that with all of that, you see what I meant with the fact that um, Blender is not just a tool anymore, but it's really this platform and I'm sure it will grow and there will be more things done and hopefully people will share it so that we can all benefit from it, uh, from this ecosystem basically. And an ecosystem is not just assets and add-on. And I think what Linkage is doing in that case is really good for the field where they provide training um, and talent. And yeah, this just helps Blender growing in our industry. Um, if you want to check what we do at my company, it's udinbv.com. Uh, we don't do only Blender stuff, but feel free to check it out. And yeah, thanks a lot.